today you see a beautiful summer dress made in woven fabric and I'll be sharing my process of checking some flat pattern measurements, vertical measurements because this bodice hits the waist. It'll be helpful, stay with me. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing and today is about woven sewing. I have a beautiful summer dress to share with you. Do a little bit of my process of what I do with a bodice that hits the waist when I want to prepare to sew a dress like this. It's different, I've been showing you a little bit on my feeding series about feeding loose woven tops that don't have a waist seam, you know. They'll start at the shoulders and just be one piece that ends up at the mid hip or full hip. And the process there can be a little bit different. There's no waist studs, there's no seam at the waist. But when you're making a bodice that's semi-fitted, that is meant to hit the waist, you can do some different checks on the bodice to make sure you're almost there before you make a muslin. And I would always, always recommend making a muslin because, <clears throat> because when we're doing flat pattern measurements, we can get very close, but it's not going to be exact, exact, because there can always be a little bit of variation from that. And if it's a pattern you've never made before and you have really nice fabric, I would really recommend making a muslin because you really want that bodice to hit at the waist. You don't want it to hit lower or higher. It's not going to fit correctly. Also, you need to check for the bust start placements if there are some. I usually fitted bodices do. You see a bust start on the side and you see a waist start on the front. You see one on the back. And then from there, you have different types of skirts. Now, when I make a muslin for a dress like this, I rarely make the skirt and sew it onto the muslin. I really don't do that. My main goal is to check that the waist of this bodice is actually going to be at my waist. But I've mentioned this before with knit projects, you know, the weight of the skirt will pull the bodice down on a knit, definitely. It will pull it down quite a lot actually sometimes. So that's why you see that on some knit garments, the bodices look super short. But when you sew your garment and put it on, it's actually fine. In woven projects like this, you might have a little bit of vertical tug. It's not like the fabric is stretching vertically that much either because usually your fabric is cut on the grain and the grain doesn't stretch vertically that much. Uh, you could end up having a tiny, tiny variation. That's why I don't see sewing the skirt on as, you know, essential, essential. But if you really want to check the fit, maybe sew a little bit of a skirt, make it like a little bit of a peplum. And I have done that before. And I've also just sewn the bodice before. Now, what dress did I use to show you this example? It's one that I've made already in the past many times. It's one that I know fits me. But I also wanted to talk about that. Maybe you sew your patterns once and then you forget about them and you never sew them again, which is an option that a lot of people have for various reasons. You know, you might get bored, you don't want to make the same thing, you want to learn new things. You know, there could be a lot of reasons why you just make a pattern once. If that's the way that you like to sew, then you can ignore what I'm going to say next. <laughs> but if you like to make your patterns many times, like I do, you know that there's a process where you went through the fitting, you made a muslin, you know, you, you might have a certain idea of the fitting adjustments that you need and you might assume it's exactly the same if you're making this dress a time later, you would just grab your pattern and make it. But let me tell you that does not work because our bodies change, obviously. And if there has been a considerable amount of time between the last time you made this pattern and when you want to make it again, if your measurements haven't changed, you know, if you go and try on your original dress and you think everything's looking pretty much the same, you can just go and grab your pattern that you already fitted and just make it and enjoy the process and have another one in a different fabric. Maybe use a different variation that's available in the pattern. But, but sometimes our bodies do change, you know, we might gain or lose weight, it might be different. It's always a good idea to check your measurements before a project because you might assume that it's all the same, it's all the same, and then you just go ahead and make your garment and it doesn't fit. It's really good to prevent that. The pattern I chose for this exercise is the Lyric dress from Love Notions. It's a pattern I've loved and made many times for myself and my mum. But it's been a while since I made it. It's been a while. And the Lyric dress is a Feature Friday pattern today. And you know what that means. It means it's $5. And also, it's a re-release. Because this pattern before, in the past, was available in sizes 0 to 24. And it's been through a sizing update. And now it's available from sizes 0 to 32. So plenty more sizes added. And that's amazing. This pattern includes cup sizes from A to D. So if your high bust measurement and your full bust measurement has a difference of 
one through four, you will have your sewing cup size there on the pattern. If you are a larger cup size, like an E cup size or double D, where you have a five inch difference or more, then you would be better off printing your size using the D cup base and doing a full bust adjustment from there. I will show you how to do that in the future. If you have seen my full bust adjustment video, you will know the theory and how much you need to add to your paper pattern if you want to go from a D cup to an E cup. And you know it's half an inch because you're adding an extra inch across the front. There's so many options in this pattern. You can have an A-line skirt that is flared out. That's always been my preference. Or you can choose one that's gathered onto the bodice. There's patch pockets for the gathered skirt option or there's slash pockets on the waist seam of the flared skirt as options. Now, because I am very short-waisted and my waist is way up here, I don't really find having pockets so high up here, very practical, so I don't ever sew those types of pockets. As for the sleeves, you can make it sleeveless or you have five other variations, short, flatter, long, bishop. It's got a v-neck line, it's got an integrated facing on the center front, both on the bodice and the skirt, so it's just the pattern piece wider that is folded to the back. Just that section is interfaced, which makes it super easy to sew. The skirts have different lengths, a really short one that makes it a peplum top or at the knee or midi below the knee. This is a pattern for woven fabrics, light to medium weight. You can use so many types, you know, rayon chali, linen, linen blends crepe you could even use quilting cotton for this one if you like a skirt that will poke out a little bit the bodice is semi-fitted so you don't need a fabric that's drapey for the bodice it's mainly for the skirt so it is a pattern that's really really worth it to get because there's so many options here and it'll be a good exercise for you to practice how to fit a bodice like this if you're looking to go that way in your sewing journey i think it's a good pattern that you can use for that the last time i made a lyric dress for myself it was in 2019 and i was a certain size and i am no longer that size for various reasons i have gained weight i have increased my measurements so it's not good to just assume i'm just going to grab my old pattern and just make it and it's going to be fine i know it's not going to be fine <laughs> and i know that because I tried on my other dress and it is like pulling and just skin tight and there's no way I can wear it comfortably anymore. I like it, I know I want to make more, I just went ahead and printed my current size. There might be things that you already know about your body, your vertical measurements if you've taken them recently that you can already have in your mind when you start checking your pattern like a brand new pattern to check for the fit. The last time I made this dress I used a size 14 with a C cup now I'm planning to use a size 16 with a C cup. Depending on your size and your cup size, the ease around the bust will vary between two, three, four inches of positive ease, which makes this a semi-fitted bodice. It's meant to be. It's not meant to be a relaxed, sort of loose type of style. And then at the waist, the, also depending on your size, you have from one and a half, two and a half, three inches of positive ease. And at the hips, you have a bit more ease, about six, seven, eight inches of ease, depending on the size that you're making. So I'm making a straight size 16 this time. And remembering my fitting adjustments from last time when I made a 14 bodice, I remember lowering the side bust up by three eighths of an inch. Now I am sort of assuming I will need to lower it further down this time. You start making the side bust start lower. You also need to think about shortening the waist start as well. Let's go and see my little process. I went back and forth between my paper pattern and my muslin. You are going to see how my muslin fits and what the adjustments I made on the pattern and how I got to that conclusion. Let's go ahead and see. I'm going to do some checks to make sure that that's all okay for me, the bust height, all those things that I usually check. It's meant to hit the waist. So that's why you see it's a small little thing. Here is a side bust start and a waist start. The bust point on the pattern is not marked on the pattern, but if you have a pattern piece that has a side bust start and a waist start, it's really easy to determine where the apex is on this pattern. And you just draw a line from the center of the start. And then on the waist start, you also draw a line in the center from the bottom up. And there is a section where they will both meet. The height of the bust point in the pattern might not match yours. It might be higher, it might be lower but at least you know that that's where it is and that's where you can measure too. 
The shape that you see here is the integrated facing for the buttons that go down the center. This will be the width of that facing and in the middle is where you're going to have your buttonholes and buttons. And I've drawn a line right in the center there, the green line, that is going to be the actual center front of the pattern. Now here on the top, on the shoulder, I have drawn the seam allowance, the 3-8 seam allowance. I've made my template that is half the width of my neck across the front. That red line, I'm going to place it behind this pattern aligned to the center front of the bodice right there. If I continue the seam allowance line following the same slope up to the edge of the paper, this is where the base of my neck would be. When I'm taking measurements of my body that are vertical, that is the reference point I use to measure my bust height, my waist height, all those things. From here, I'm going to measure down and I can see that this bust point is an inch higher than what mine is. So this is the bust point of the pattern. My bust point is down here, an inch lower, which is very typical for me, very common pattern adjustment that I need to do. I have drawn a rectangle around my bust that there in green and I will just cut the rectangle, bring this down by an inch fold the dart closed and reshape through the side seams to the new positioning of this dart right there. But it's not only that that you need to look at, you need to look at also the waist dart. If I didn't modify it, it would reach actually my bust point right there. You can see the tip of the dart is like 3 eighths of an inch away from my bust point. That would give me super pointy darts and you never want the tip of the dart to be at the apex. I'm going to take this waist dart and back it down by an inch and a quarter around there. I'm just gonna make it shorter in essence. It'll keep the same width here, so it won't modify anything. It'll just be a shorter dart and it will match my bust height much better. Nothing, nothing too complex. It'll just give you more ease around the bust. Remember our bust volume is around here. You want there to be a distance from the apex to where the dart tip is. And I have a good distance there of about an inch and a quarter. It could be more. I could always fix this later on in the fit. I could always make this even shorter if I needed to after, after the fact. It's something that you can fix afterwards. Here you can see I've trimmed out my rectangle. I'm going to place this an inch lower so that the tip of the dart is actually sort of directed to my bust point right there, which is an inch lower than the original one from the pattern. I'm gonna fill in the gap with paper. I have some excess paper on the side just to make sure I have enough to true the dart and I'm just going to fold it along that center line I'd drawn before. The bulk of the dart will be going down of course. Just make sure you align the side see here because that's how it's going to be. And now I'm going to go ahead maybe just freehand and join these so that it's nice and smooth here on the side. Easier to do it by hand because I've got a shape right there. I can't lay the paper flat. And now I'm gonna trim. You can see the side seam is nice and smooth with the dart closed. Now I can release the dart and it's shaped to the height where it is now. So this is going to make sense when I sew it. This waist dart is going to be shorter. This is my back bodice. I also got my high neck point right there with my template and measured down up to the lines of the seam allowance. When you attach it to the skirt, it's got 3 eighths of an inch and that's where you can see the dashed line. And I find that this is 3 eighths of an inch too long. Front bodice also has a dashed line. I also measured down and I think I need to shorten it by 3 eighths of an inch. So there is no shorten and lengthen line on this bodice. But I think that's good because it gives you the freedom to make length adjustments where you need them. I know that in this area up above, the armhole, all that is okay. I basically need to take away length between the bust dart and the waist. Between that area, I need to take away 3 eighths of an inch, in theory. So from the bottom, I measured about 2.5 inches up from here, at the same height for both of them, and drew a straight line across. Drew a line there, 3 eighths of an inch, and I'll just overlap meet there at the center, tape that down. I have the line drawn over there. I'm gonna tape it down and overlap it also. I will need to just redraw the dart legs and fix them up a little. After you do that overlap, you might have a bit of discrepancy there, but nothing that can't be fixed. See how it fits on the body. Always the muslin is gonna give you the real truth. You know, <laughs> there's a bit of limitations with flat pattern measurements anyway, so we shall see. Here you can see the fit of my bodice and I'm happy with 
the dark placement for sure the side bust dart is at, at the correct place and the waist dart is good the height of this waist dart is fine it's not right at my apex so lowering it an inch was good now I've got my pants at where my natural waist is you can see it there and you can see that I shouldn't have shortened this bodice by 3 eighths of an inch for sure <laughs> I need to add that length back in consider also that you have a skirt pulling this down as well so I'm sure the original bodice was going to be perfect at the back I have my waist studs there and also I need to re-add that length onto the bodice I do want to modify the armhole a little I think at around this point there where the notch for the sleeve would be I would like a little more coverage just like 3 eighths of an inch out and make it higher 3 eighths of an inch right there I always think it's really worth making a muslin for a bodice that's meant to fit like this at the waist I have like one and a half inches of ease it's supposed to be like that and at the bust I have about two and a half so it is a fitted style even though I made it before it is a new size I've had to change it in different ways so I wouldn't just assume I could just do the same modifications I, I made in 2019 to it okay so it turned out that my bodice didn't need to be shortened by 3 eighths it was actually too short on me when I put it on and you know if you're gonna experiment it's better to do it on your muslin you don't want to be taking away or adding from this length because you're going to modify the dart you're gonna end up with something different here and it's not gonna match the skirt so any adjustment has to be above that so this stays as per the original okay and at the front I've already corrected what I've done I took the overlap away and stuck everything where it was supposed to be these armholes, when I tried on my muslin, I think I'd like a little bit more coverage. Specifically here, there's supposed to be a sleeve here, but I'm making mine sleeveless. So from about there, I'm just going to put some paper behind there and just close this up a little bit. Where the notch is there for the sleeve. From there, I'm going to bring it out by maybe 3 eighths of an inch extra paper and then just taper it to nothing there, just to have a bit more coverage there and a little higher here by about 3 eighths of an inch so I'll just put some paper, fix these up to make them the same and then I'll be happy to cut my main fabric I modified my armholes, I did it freehand, I didn't use a curved ruler, I always feel more confident like that but you might like a curved ruler. From where the notches are for the sleeves as a reference, I brought it up by 3 eighths, I brought it up by 3 eighths and then around the middle of the armhole, around the half point, I started joining the lines right there. Same as on the back and this is just refining the feet from the original, just a little bit higher. I feel more comfortable if you haven't seen this video that I'm showing you on the screen that goes over how to check for vertical measurements on a pattern even though I made that video thinking about woven tops that don't have a waist seam the concepts described in that video will be very helpful for this one we can have all our circumferences correct you know the garment will in theory fit our bodies this way or these other areas those are things that can vary the most and I have seen this a lot where people will show their muslin on and I can clearly see the waist is really low on them but the person showing is clearly not able to identify that and maybe it's just not knowing where your waist is or just not able to recognize that on a muslin but having a waist too high or too low is super common with styles like this and you can see I checked mine I thought I had to do an adjustment I shortened it I made my bodice my bodice was too short so I added the length back and that is what's really good about muslins they give you so much information and you can go back and forth and adjust your pattern until you're really happy I decided to just add a little bit extra here to the armholes you saw that that was so easy to do and it's going to give me the coverage that I want around here which is something I noticed when wearing my other Lyric dresses that I made that were sleeveless. I always thought, mm, I wish I had a tiny bit more there. So those are things that you can definitely change. Don't be scared of changing little things like that. If it's something that you like and you, you're going to be more comfortable wearing your garment that way. This fabric was way up there in my mind. I didn't buy it that long ago, probably late April. So it's been a few months. 
and it's a linen rayon blend it's so so pretty the colors are so summery i did not film anything of the sewing with this one because i already have a video showing you how to sew the neckline which is the part that can take a little longer all the rest is very simple sew shoulder seam sew several darts you know put your bodice together with the skirt waist seam there you can barely tell because of the print i have a buttonhole right in the middle of that seam i had quite a nice piece of fabric left over from this beautiful print i didn't want to use it up making bias tape i wanted to keep it for something else so i used my store-bought satin bias tape and i used the same for the sleeveless armhole it's such a lovely floaty dress at the back you can't see the waist studs the waist seam and I have the flared skirt. I just really like this type of skirt best. And I remember when my other lyric dress used to fit me correctly, how great I felt in that dress. And I just wanted to have it again in a size that will fit me right now in 2021. <laughs> this dress uses 3.8 seam allowance for the whole thing. That's how it looks inside. This facing is from the same front piece and it's just folded back, the same as for the skirt. So there's not a different type of pattern piece that you have to sew on to have the button band. It's all included. The binding comes from behind that integrated facing like that. And I've shown you many times how to sew this same technique on these V types of necklines. And it's the same if it's rounded, it's the same, same technique. I will leave down in the description box some videos where I show in detail, but my original Lyric dress has this technique in detail as well, so you can see it. And I've pressed the seam down it's sold so lovely it's not hard to sew it's not a dress that will take you hours and hours on end to make at all doing the muslin and doing your check fits might take a little longer but it's so worth it to have such a beautiful dress like this that fits so well with all those darts that's help the garments fit our bodies don't think it's a bad thing that the dress has darts you know it is good i like a dress that is not loose and boxy at the waist i like that this comes in close to the waist and then has the flared skirt it's just very pretty and I'm very happy with this dress. It's gonna be one of my favorites. I love the print. Let's see how it looks. This is my newest Lyric dress in a rayon linen blend with a beautiful summery print. This is a size 16 with a C-cut bodice. A few fitting adjustments to the bodice, mainly with the positioning of the bust studs. And this is the flared skirt option without the pockets above the knee. I love how this fabric drapes and moves when I walk. It's really, really lovely and perfect for hot weather. The facing for the buttons is integrated to the front bodice piece and the front skirt piece, so it's really easy to sew. I have 14 buttons. They are two inch apart. And there's one right there where the waist seam meets the skirt seam right there. So make sure that area doesn't gape. My goal was to have the waist of this bodice hit my natural waist and it's exactly there, both front and back. I'm very happy with the fit I was able to achieve here on the top. This V is very nice. The depth is not low, it's not high perfect adding a little bit here makes me very happy i have an armhole that i really like so the muslin really does help you see things like that and just look at these colors it's so so happy this basta is correctly placed for my bust height it would have been too high if i had not changed that and the waist start that comes from here is also just reaching there it's not going all the way to the top that's why i had to shorten it and at the back, I didn't make any changes to the back that those are fine. I'm so happy I can have this dress again. I love my previous one. Maybe I'll fit in, into it someday, maybe not. It's in my closet, I really like it. But I can have a new one now that fits me right now in 2021. And I'm very happy with it. It's so pretty, it makes me really happy. Such a nice woven dress, I love it. To the place where the animals go but baby, I'm here and I'm watching you move There's just one thing you should know Girl, you are my fire I'll miss you desire
hope this video was helpful. You saw some of my very practical process and it's exactly the way I sew. I go back and forth, I tweak things. Definitely make a muslin if you're making a dress like this. Don't go ahead and cut your precious fabric because there are things that you can fix once you've already made your dress and others that you can't. Um, when you have a bodice that hits the waist, don't just go and add and take away length from the edge of the paper. You need to do that adjustment up further. And even though this pattern doesn't have a short and a length in line, I think it's a blessing in disguise because it allows you to make that short and a length in line on the area that you need it. You know, you might be petite, you might need to make it shorter at the armhole. So you might need to draw your line there. You might need to make it short above the bust if you needed to make that bust that higher. So many ways you can adjust the pattern to fit your torso length. So I chose a place to put that line that was above the edge of the paper about two and a half inches and made my cut line there and it's perfectly normal although it's an adjustment i didn't need <laughs> i made my muslin like that and then added the length back i think if you want to avoid feeling frustrated of making something that doesn't fit you correctly with be pretty fabric i think one way to avoid that is making a muslin for sure don't think it's a waste of time it's not muslins are so fast to sew it will take you no time to whip one up and you can know quickly if your adjustments have been correct and what you need to do don't forget the lyric dress is only five dollars today and because it's a re-release it'll be 30 percent off through the weekend saturday and sunday but today friday will be the day to get it for only five dollars which is 60 percent i will see you again very soon with more sewing bye